Hello, everyone. Welcome to Influencers, where we bring you folks that are in the trenches, in the communities, and in our country doing great things. Today, I'm honored to have Anthony Munoz, Hall of Famer, an American of Mexican descent, husband, father, grandfather, and I got the pleasure of hanging out with him this weekend, and it was amazing. Anthony, how are you? I'm doing great, man. How you doing? It's good seeing you again. It was a, I had a great time with all of you in Las Vegas. I uh, got to meet some new friends, so it's great to hook up again. So thank you. Yeah, we're going to jump into that Las Vegas trip. Uh, I want people to just know a little more about you. Uh, so let's get, you know, let's start with some personal stuff first. Nice. How long have you been married? Well, uh, April 22nd, I celebrated uh, 43 years. So uh, met my wife. Uh, I, I met her in high school, but really didn't. Uh, there was no, we were playing in a co-ed softball game. But I came home after my freshman year at USC uh, and went down to the park in South Ontario where a lot of softball was being played. She was playing. We got to talking. We started dating that summer after my fresh between my freshman and sophomore year in college. Went back to school uh, and we continued to date and uh, we got married uh, that year. So 43 years uh, has been phenomenal. Uh, Dee Dee, we call her Dee Dee. Her name's Diane. Uh, we call her Dee Dee, D-E-D-E. -D -E, and she is, uh, as they say, I, I, I outkick my coverage. She's an amazing woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And then what about your family? Tell us a little bit about yeah. your family. Well, I grew up in Ontario, California. Uh, you mentioned the, the Mexican dis, uh, descent. My, so the crazy thing about it is my mom raised five kids by herself. So I, wow. I knew all of her family. Didn't know, I never met my dad. Uh, didn't know anything about his family. Never met any of his family members. So I knew that my mom's family, they were all from Chihuahua, Mexico. And I knew that. But then a few years ago, not that long, maybe five, six years ago, uh, this organization was doing a genealogy reveal and uh, they took three couples in Cincinnati kind of celebrity couples and I knew a couple answers about my dad and they found they tracked it down and his whole family was from Chihuahua too uh, wow. so I found that out uh, of course my mom like I said raised five kids by herself she was one of 10 so I had a lot of relatives there in uh, in in Southern Cal uh, Ontario area uh, two older brothers two younger sisters we lost mom about five years ago and then I lost one sister not too long ago. So there's four of us that are still alive, two older brothers, a younger sister, myself. Uh, the two other two siblings are in California, one brother's in Houston, Texas. And then uh, Didi and I, uh, we have two of our own kids. We have a son, Michael, and a daughter, Michelle. Uh, Michael will be 40 this year. Michelle just turned 38. Uh, we have nine grandkids, uh, five boys and four girls. So the family, uh, you know, we had just a couple, but the family, uh, grew rapidly with our kids so we stayed in Cincinnati Ohio that's home now uh, got a job offer a week after my last uh, game with the Bengals to go back out to, to coach uh, on the west coast and turned it down stayed in Cincinnati to raise our kids there and uh, so yeah that's our family still got a lot of relatives in Southern California when we go back of course I'm looking forward to things opening up again because COVID's really put a, a damper on being able to go back to and visit family so yeah no, to get back there yeah that's the most effect, right, for guys like yeah. us. I mean, because I have yeah. a similar story. I've been I've been my, with my wife since ninth grade, and wow. uh, you know this COVID thing, the the whole family gatherings and all that. It's, it's painful. Yeah, it is. It is. But that's that's our family, and uh, so we're uh, we're enjoying the the journey and uh, just having a good time now as an old uh, married couple and grandparents, and uh, just being able to do some fun stuff. Well, I mean, obviously, let's talk a little football and career before getting into the vaccines um, and your incredible recent work that you just did. But I want to I want people to know a little bit about uh, the football side as well. Um, you know, it, it sounds like Cincinnati Bengals took a chance on you because you had some injuries and, and, and they and they took a chance on you. And, and you know, quite frankly, uh, arguably, you became the uh, greatest offensive lineman in history. Tell us about that and that journey. Yeah, it's very thankful. I still every day, even though I've been retired for what, you know, 28, 29 years, thankful for Paul Brown, who helped start the organization there, his, his family. Uh, because, you know, growing up in Southern California, I wanted to be a baseball player. Man, that was my first love. But, you know, then eventually I got to go to USC, go to school there and play football. And, you know, with dreams of doing a lot of great things in athletics, and it really didn't happen at USC because in four years, at USC, I had three knee operations. My freshman, junior year, missed about half the season. 
And then my sophomore year, totally healthy. My senior year, not halfway into the season, but first game of the season, second time we had the ball, wow. I went down in Lubbock, Texas, flew home, had to have my third knee operation. So I missed the entire season. Uh, could have redshirted to come back to grad school, but yeah, I said, you know what? All the guys I came into school with, they played in a couple of Rose Bowls and I'd yet to play one. So I, I was a madman. I rehabbed, I got ready, convinced the coach to let me earn that starting job back. And I played in the Rose Bowl, the entire game. It's the only game I played my senior year, not knowing what would happen. Uh, so I went through all the medical examinations uh, with all the teams. I was always the last guy out of every medical examination. And then uh, draft day came around. In fact, yesterday, uh, April 29th, it was 41 years, April 29th, 1980. Uh, the Bengals decided to take a chance and uh, drafted, not only drafted me, but with the third pick in the entire draft. And I'll wow. tell you what, as a, as a six foot six, 300 pound man, after I hung up with that phone call uh, to see me cry and just an appreciation. And then we, after I kind of composed myself, my wife and I had to pull out a map and find Cincinnati on the map. So, <laughs> but yeah, they took a shot in the, uh, so I was determined to, to make sure that uh, they'd made the right choice. And I played 13 years, didn't miss a game. After only playing one health, healthy season at, at USC, I didn't miss a game until my uh, 11th year uh, with Cincinnati. Wow. And it was a great run. Played with a lot of great players, a lot of great relationships. We had uh, two Super Bowl runs, but uh, it was a lot of fun. So I'm thankful that Paul Brown uh, took that shot. I mean, I'm sure there was a lot of fans in Cincinnati when they drafted me. They're like scratching their head thinking, what in the heck are they doing? This guy can't stay healthy. But uh, I was able to still stay healthy for the most I bet part. Those, I bet those same people are happy now. <laughs> you know, I, you know, I'm thankful. That's a home now. Uh, we're part of the community. And we, you know, we got embraced quickly and we fell in love with that community quickly. So it was, it was only uh, natural that we would stay there because of the community and uh, we're still there. But yeah, we've, we've met a lot of friends. I've actually met some of the people that were thinking, wait, we can't do this. We can't draft this guy. But uh, they say, well, we're happy we drafted you. Yeah. Uh, you know, in doing a little research, I noticed you've won many awards. I'm just curious, which one means the most? Wow. Wow. You know, there's, there's probably, I'd have to say, two or three that uh, probably mean the most. Uh, in the NFL, late in my career, I received, but now they call it the NFL. It's the NFL Walter Payton Man of the Year, yes. uh, which really encompasses not only your your you know, your production on the field, but more in the community, who you are as a person, your family, a community. And then there's a, a sports ministry group called Athletes in Action. It's a sports ministry. And they give out the Bart Starr Award, similar wow. type of award. And I won that early on. I think it was the first or second year they gave that award out. Uh, and then it's pretty cool. You know, I talked about baseball. And, uh, and I actually received a few years ago, I received the Roberto Clemente Award. Wow. From, uh, yeah, from a group. And, and that was like, I mean, I remember watching them play. I was a big baseball fan. And again, that is for your work in the community, your work with your family. And so those are probably three that I'm, I'm just like, I'm very thankful that you know, I'm on the list of all the recipients because you look at the recipients and it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, you, know, you look at the, the NFL man of the year and I can't remember how many, but the majority of them are also Hall of Fame football players. So it says not only did they excel in the field, but they excelled in the community. And that was Walter Payton. That's why they named the, named the award after him. That's beautiful, man. I, and you're very consistent. When I was with you this weekend, you know, community uh, kept coming up. So very mm -hmm. consistent. You're a good man. Uh, but, you know, we got to switch gears now because in my research, mm -hmm. I also found out you were a heck of a movie actor, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah, did two movies. How did that come I, about? I would have been very disappointed if you hadn't brought that up. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was crazy. I was, um, it's funny. In fact, what this is what, uh, 40 years later, I still get like $15, $20 residual checks. But uh, wow. when I was at USC, I did like an extra part in one of the a Charles Bronson movie. And that was fun. It was kind of a day thing. And then it was like after my second year in the NFL, after we played in the Super Bowl, a doctor, a phys, a orthopedic doctor I had was, uh, he was actually the orthopedic surgeon for the Raiders, but he was in Beverly Hills. So he was like the orthopod for the movie stars. Yeah. And uh, I'll never forget, after the Super Bowl, he cleaned out some uh, calcium deposit from my right elbow. And my final exam, I went in, he cleared me to start lifting. He said, Anthony, I might have a little, little project for you. I'm, Doc, what do you got? He said, I have two friends. 
uh, they're in the movie business and they're going to make a movie and they might have a small part for you. I said, doc, I said, I'm not an actor. He said, no, 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 go, it's going to be fun. So I walk over, I drive over to the, his two buddies and it's uh, Erwin Winkler and Bob Shardoff, the two big time producers. Erwin Winkler, walk in, big time. Yeah, yeah, I walk in, they got Raging Bull posters and Rocky posters and, and I'm thinking, what am I doing in here? So yeah, I, I, I happened to get the part in the right stuff. I was orderly Gonzalez uh, working in the hospital with all the astronauts as they were going through all their testing to become astronauts. And it was fun. I mean, you know, I get to work with guys like Ed Harris and Scott Fallen and, uh, you know, Dennis Quaid. And I got to meet Sam Elliott, got to meet Sam Yeager. Uh, I'm sorry, Chuck Yeager. Sam Elliott played Chuck Yeager. And so, you know, it was, it was a lot of fun for me. And I tried that out for a little bit. But I said, no, nah, there's too much sitting around for me. I got to be doing something. But, yeah, that's my that's my big movie under my belt. Uh, my big uh, career as a thespian. And uh, it was short lived. <laughs> <laughs> I had to bring it up, Anthony. I had to. <laughs> <laughs> somebody in fact it's interesting and we'll get into it but i gotta share this we're gonna get into my visit to las vegas but we went to the mgm pro, uh, pro, uh, property there and the security guy when we entered he was a big football fan he had a u.s thing for, usc thing for me son but he had the dvd of the right stuff wow and i signed the cover for him that's never happened it's funny that you bring that up but he was so excited. He goes, I got something for you. He goes, I don't know if you ever signed one of these. I said, nope, this is my first one. It was the DVD cover for the right stuff. That's amazing. That's fantastic. <laughs> love that. I love that. So, yeah, Las Vegas. So you uh, let's talk about your recent trip to Las Vegas, yeah. uh, where I had a great time meeting you and, and got to know your work with uh, Silver Summit uh, Health Plan, which is just an amazing company and yeah. really doing some amazing things out here. Uh, we love Silver Summit. Yeah. Um, and I know we were, it was about vaccines and I'm just, I'm just curious how yeah. and why, how and why are you involved with vaccines? Well, you know, it's interesting because you talk about Silver Summit Healthcare. Uh, we've been working about three years with Centene Healthcare, which is, you know, they're, they're, they're partnered and they're part of the, the company. Uh, so we do all these high school programs, but occasionally they get programs where they want is Daryl Green, Hall of Famer, Washington Redskins played 20 years, Aeneas Williams. Hall of Famer, myself, we go around the country and we do these high school programs. But then there's other programs. And so they approached me and I'd done a couple of PSAs in Ohio, encouraging people to get their vaccine, encouraging the minority com uh, communities to get their vaccine, you know, the communities of color. So I did that in, uh, in Ohio. It's gone over well. So then uh, Joyce Larkins, who's with uh, Centene, uh, George Veris, who works with us at the Hall of Fame, they contacted me and said, would you be willing to go out to Las Vegas, visit some vaccine sites, visit some health care, and just encourage them, thank them. I said, you know what? I'm all about it. Get me out there. I want to go out there and encourage people, go through where people are being vaccinated and sitting and waiting afterwards and just give them an autographed football and just thank them for coming and getting vaccinated because I've been vaccinated. And I think that's going to be the best way for us to I'm ready to get back and have the family reunions and right. have events. So uh, that's why I did it, Peter. I wanted to come out and I, you know, I was going to say, I understand, but I don't totally understand all the work that goes into the front line, but I'm sure it's been a tough go. And so I wanted to thank the nurses and the medical people and the volunteers, just thank them. And to see the vaccine vaccination site set up at the Win, at the MJ properties and at UNLV, uh, I was impressed. And to see some of the college students volunteering in, uh, in being a part of this. So, and then I got to meet uh, you, Peter, and some of you know, the other community leaders. And, and that was, that's fun for me. I, I enjoy meeting people that are making an impact in the community. So that's why I took the time. Uh, I knew I had to come to Cleveland for the, the draft, but I had enough time to fly out there and do that. And so hopefully if we get back out there, we can uh, get back together. And I know we talked about playing a little golf. Maybe we can go out to some of those nice golf courses and play some oh. golf. But that's, that's why I did it, to really encourage to thank and to say really appreciate what you all are doing. Yeah, and it was well received. I got to tell you, uh, not a Silver Summit just did a really nice yeah. job putting this all together, and yeah. the media coverage was amazing. I mean, you were you spent the full day at many locations, and it was just well received. And and you know, I, I think it's important stuff to do. You know, like you said, thanking right. these nurses and and uh, at the Latin Chamber, we uh. We, we've introduced mariachi music oh. while people are waiting that 15 minute wait time that you got to do after you get your shot. And it has been a huge success. I mean, we've done it now. We were only supposed to do it once. Now they've asked us to come back three times. 
And so we got mariachi music. That's awesome. So we're just trying to thank people and get them excited about doing the right thing so that we can open back up and get back together. Exactly, exactly. You know, they tell you to move after your vaccine. So are they dancing? Is there a way to, to Oh yeah, they're dancing. I'm sure they're uh, they're moving a little bit. Get, get, yeah, getting it going. But that's that's a great concept. That that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Back uh vacunas y mariachi, we called it. And <laughs> the people ate it up. So yeah. I'm just happy that you came out, that you made a you I want you to know that uh that trip was worth it. You made you made a dent, you made a real uh impression on folks. I talked to some of the nurses and Everybody was real happy with meeting you. Great. So uh, just know that you made a real impact that day. Well, good. You know, Peter, what was exciting too is we went and you know, we saw the medical community. We saw the volunteer. But the great thing was going into the MGM uh, pro- property and seeing all the workers. And, and I think that to me is just appreciating the workers, you know, because they're the ones that are busting it, you know, behind the scenes. That's right. And they were all, I got the chance to speak to them and sign autographs for them. And, but, uh, you know, it wasn't just this group. It was just a variety of groups. And that was a, the fun thing about it. Anthony, I'm just curious with all the things that you've done. Um, and thank God you, you're, you're, you're healthy and able to do things. Uh, what do you want your legacy to be? Do you ever well, think about legacy? You know, I do. And, you know, um, I, when I think about legacy, I don't think about the, the athletic accomplishments. I think more on the spiritual side. You know, my faith is very important to me, my family. I just want people when they, you know, even now or when I'm gone to think about me as they're here was a God-fearing man who wanted to please God first and foremost with what he did and treated people the way God wanted them to treat uh, people. And so that's, that's what I'm, when I think of legacy, I think I want the light to shine more on the Lord, you know, that, that he was my power source and that he used me. That's just absolutely beautiful. Yeah and consistent with the man that I met this weekend. I really feel like I, I, I saw a piece of your soul and you were very consistent. So, well, you know, in Peter, closing, you. I'm just going to say it. I must say it. You're an incredibly humble and kind giant. Wow. Um, I really mean that. And I look forward to uh, doing some incredible work with you yeah. in the future because I know we talked about some things that you're going to yeah. be doing and hopefully October we can connect and just know that we're going to be standing with you and I'm going to come with some yeah. funding and I'm going to help you achieve some of the things well, that you want to do because you're, you're really real about it. Well, appreciate it. And I, I thank you for those kind words and I just appreciate the hospitality. I mean, I came into a community where, you know, we go there and play some golf. My wife and I use it in there a year, a time or two a year, but to come in and to really be embraced and accepted, that was great hospitality. And I, I really appreciate that, that, that was really you know, transparent and true. And so I thank you for your kind words and uh, you got to be uh, thankful and proud of your community. Yeah, no, and I am. And that's who we are in Las Vegas. Yeah. I was a little surprised when you asked me what casino I lived in, but, you know, I just want you to know that, you know, <laughs> I don't live in a casino. We, we, well, we have I thought you all community. did. I thought you all did, you know. I thought you were going to give me the handshake with the little chip or coin or something. <laughs> <laughs> and, Anthony, thank you so much for joining me in this Influencers. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this, getting to know a real Hall of Famer, but even more than that, now you know he's more than just a Hall of Famer uh, in so many ways. And grateful that you joined this episode of Influencer, and we will see you again soon, my friends. (laughs) 